Oh my god. Okay. <sighs> Update. I actually don't know what the hell's going on. And also, I thought people were being racist. Some of them were. Apparently, a lot of it largely is supposed to be... I mean, it doesn't really affect people to the extent it used to. Um, but it's still prevalent in many parts of America, the racist and the ethnicity-based discrimination and racism in and of itself. But apparently, what I was actually facing was sexism. And it was from both men and women. That's why I thought they were being racist. It was giving me a headache anyway, but um, sexism is discrimination based on somebody's gender. Okay, a person comes in two genders, men and women, unlike the lower forms in the animal kingdom, being bugs and um, a lot of mammals to a certain extent. They don't care there's not much gender distinguishable there's not distinguishable differences between genders both functionally or physically um sexual dimorphism is when a mammalian or any other species typically mammalian um looks physically different so with ants you know male female ants look the same except when the female ant is pregnant same thing with many bugs except for um i actually don't know if i can think of an example on the spot um i'm assuming praying mantises i don't know if that's true um i hear female spiders typically tend to be bigger than male and mosquitoes there's difference between male and female mosquitoes in size and function but that's sp specifically because of breeding so they the only reason that they're different is because um the female mosquito requires more nutrients in order to create those eggs so it's kind of to like minimize the energy consumed and energy requires to keep the species alive so um they don't really need that much energy except for the female who needs all that energy to produce all those eggs and to find places to produce that eggs, whereas males are only typically responsible for holding the semen or the other part of the DNA required for breeding. So they don't actually, like, it's kind of like the keeping the stuff there, whereas females, they they kind of need to create some more stuff. Um, that's with a lot of mammalian species, apart from human, who are still technically mammalian. Um, so mammals are the ones who are sexually dimorphic ducks um, in particular um, there's some species of dogs that are sexually dimorphic but only in terms of size um, definitely differences in um, the genitalia that's definitely a thing um, what else do I want to say um, I've been trying to figure out what it is okay so me, I'm from a, um, a matriarchal country, so in a matriarchal country, okay, so this is the difference between Korea and Japan, Japan is patriarchal, Korea is matriarchal, that's a very big difference, I think China is majority is supposed to be matriarchal, but they're patriarchal now because of their political movement, which was started, I, I'm, I believe it was because of Mao, and he kind of like, enforced Taoism which was kind of like a philosophical slash religious train of thought that people could participate in and he kind of enforced it on everybody he says his political movement now includes some sort of religious aspect to it um but this made it easier for people to comprehend and agree with that's the only reason he did it that way but apart from that um they're supposed to be matriarchal they're not actually matriarchal anymore most Chinese people are patriarchal including like the other territories that they've taken over including hong kong macau um, taiwan those areas um what else is there um <sighs> trying to find a different kind of okay I'm gonna explain to the difference between living in Canada specifically and most parts of the US 
or a large percentage of the U.S., not most, like a significant portion of the U.S. versus living in East Asia. Prostitution of all forms in East Asia is illegal, including um, stripping, escort services, and um, outright prostitution in, for males and females. It's illegal in every country in Asia, East Asia at least. Anywhere Buddhism is a large percent, like large, largely ingrained into the culture, which is most countries in East Asia. And some parts of um, Middle Asia, so like, you know, Mongolia, the Kazakhstan, and all that kind of stuff. Um, I actually don't know about the Middle East, but in Canada and some parts of the US, stripping is legal, Escort escorting services and prostitution still illegal. So the only where only place you can actually go stripping, which is um, exotic dancers. So there's women that go to a certain location and they can take off their clothes and dance to the music in exchange for monetary compensation. So the strip clubs, I don't actually know how the pay is divided. I've only read some strippers talking about it. I don't know if it's true. Um, they said they don't actually don't get paid from the strip club directly, they get paid per patronage. So the more customers or clients they bring into that area, the more they get paid. But um, that's what a lot of strippers said, that's why they focus on getting the customers and clients to the area and getting their patrons. Some can directly pay the stripper for a private dance. So I don't know how much of it they get to keep, but they get paid a they get charged, like it's like going to a bar, you order something, you get a receipt. So you pay for that, right? You get a receipt, you pay for it, and then whatever they earn, like they divide that and then it goes to dancers that work at that location. Um, a lot of cops like to go to strip clubs, so that's where most of the police officers go to. Um, this is why I don't like going to strip clubs, like strip clubs and strip bars and all those kind of seedy weird locations I don't really like. With, um, bars are okay, uh, just be careful, there's a lot of drug dealers and a lot of drug users at bars, especially if you're going to the cheaper ones, so like the ones where they have really good drink deals, you know, like, um, uh, $5 pints or, um, I don't know, they're... They have other options, like they have coffee and they have specialty drinks and they have drink specials on their menus. Yeah, those ones you might want to avoid. Unless it's really dressed up, like looks like a chain location, then those are fine for people and tourists to go to. Or if you live outside the area and you want to get to know what the city's like a little bit, those ones are okay. I kind of would advise staying away from it. Just go to your regular, like... Chili's, TGI Fridays, um, there's Hooters, you can always go there, um, I don't know, here there's Jack Astor's, there's, um, the Keg, there's Kelsey's, those locations, they're fine if you want to go to the bar and drink or anything like that, there's local bars in the area, again, I, like I said, those aren't the greatest places to go, plus the food is going to be really bad most of the time, they don't actually upkeep the maintain the kitchen, most people don't go there to eat, people go there to drink, okay? They are ordering alcohol there, and typically it's really cheap. So it's like, um, Korean, this is where I go to most of the time, and most of the bars that I've been to are Korean, they have drink specials. So it's like, oh, order two pints and, um, it's a combo special, two pints with, um, a stew, or two pints with, like, a barbecue or something like that. It comes with the food and it's a lot cheaper than ordering it separately. So that's where I went. Um, a lot of, but you can go to restaurants to order that too. So every Korean restaurant will have their own combo special. So you can get like, oh, one bottle of soju with like um, Korean barbecue and it's like instead of being like 35 something, um, the whole entire thing is only cost like $29.99 or $24.99 on Tuesdays. That kind of stuff, like that's their specials. But um, other than that, like, anyway, I kind of digressed. Um, that kind of prostitution stuff is illegal there. It's very rampant in America. Which is really, like, something that I don't personally agree with. But I think it has something to do with sexism and how, like, a lot of women are forced to work and they can't find work within a male-dominated field, which is pretty much all fields. Excuse me. So, like, 
Um, I didn't actually know what sexism is. I think a lot of people were mentioning it to me, and I was like, I don't, I don't really know what that is. <laughs> um, okay, so this idea behind sexism is that, uh, like, not idea. This is this is an act of itself. It's legitimate discrimination against women. So people treat you differently based on your expressed gender, or the gender that they can see you to behave as. So if you're biologically female, they're gonna treat you differently than if you, regardless of what kind of person you are. Whatever assumption comes with you being a woman in that demographic is how they're gonna see you and treat you and believe who you are to be. That's the expectation that's coming from them. Now, again, a lot of people, because they don't like the cognitive dissonance and the social distancing in that way, like, um, they don't want to make other people feel comfortable, and also there's some are actively being threatened if they behave out of line, right? So they're kind of forced to behave in a way that is expected from what that person is expecting. And the reason why they do that is because they want to keep men in power socially. So they want to have men be more valued than women. That's the whole idea behind the whole feminism movement saying we should be or either of equal or um, same kind of status. So like it shouldn't be that way where women are mistreated or devalued just based on the fact that they're women. You know, a woman doctor with same skills and same experience as a man doctor who are the same type of person should be respected equally in that field. Not just a guy, just because based on the fact that he's a man and men are worth more, is intrinsically valued more so than women. Right? That's what the feminism movement is. Again, it's kind of hard to overcome your cultural differences, which is some countries are patriarchal, some countries are matriarchal. I'm from a matriarchal country where the social power is held by women so women are the ones kind of in charge head of the household kind of thing so women are supposed to be the one who have more authority now the way that it's been compensated in korea not compensated but the way that they're forced to kind of do it this way because again i think a lot of patriarchal countries are trying to dominate the matriarchal countries to convert them into being patriarchal which doesn't work for some ethnic backgrounds like i said people are from different ethnic backgrounds it expresses itself in its behavior so some people from different backgrounds will be different than other people from different backgrounds right like in preferences and behavior and the things skills that are learnable like kind of think of it as like a this is a cell phone and this is a glass bottle right this is used to contain drinks beverages and this is used to contact people right that's kind of how you should be seeing people like they're made for a specific kind of function i mean some functions are outdated some functions are not necessary some people are trying to get rid of some functions you can kind of see that through the sexist behavior that they're expressing as in they want the men to be able to say what can go and what can't go i personally didn't know that it was sexism i thought they were being racist because i'm from a matriarchal country and i didn't really realize what that was because when i talk to other korean people like they know what i'm talking about and it's easier to do it that way right because like you both know what it is but then other people like they're i mean in korea it's trashy like this is kind of where k-dramas come from in k-pop so they like kind of make it seriously trashy when they're like oh like uh, this is what it's like the male dominated it's kind of like oh the adverts for drinks soju is a popular drink in korea um there's soju girls so like there's celebrities or some singers they like to like pose with soju bottles and drink companies and then they have that posters around bars and like those are called soju models and they're like they sell drinks alcohol drinks so that's like basically like this is just korean trash it's like um trash novels in korean yeah <laughs> but um i think the problem is that um i can see that some women are uncomfortable being in an authority position or position of power right so it's like i'm a woman and i should be able to take a leadership role without having to feel affected by it but some women can't because it's not 
they don't possess the personality and the traits for it and they don't have the skills required to perform that function and they won't be able to learn those skills because it's not in their DNA that kind of stuff not that other women from that country can't do that I'm just saying just from that ethnicity that's not what they were breeding for so like kind of you're abusing that person by forcing them to be in a specific role that they're not meant to be but that's part of sexism where with men it doesn't exist so with men it doesn't really matter they can't pick up those skills even if it takes them a while with women if they can't do something they can't do it even if you force her to do it she's not going to be able to function normally like it's she's gonna have significant health problems i'm sure with some men they're like that too but most of the time because like it's not manly to complain about that kind of stuff like you know pick yourself up by the bootstrap stop complaining don't be such a woman um just go and do it you know be a man and take responsibility and do the best for your people kind of stuff like that manly kind of stuff yeah that is um that's the sexism part talking, t- telling other people to do it that way. I mean, it works for the majority of men, um, accounting for the fact that like they're not, there's nothing wrong with them, right? And I think with patriarchy, the assumption is that no one's really, there's nothing really wrong with anyone, and if there is, there's a way to work it out, right? Like, you don't need to worry about that kind of stuff. There's other people who can help that person out. That's I think, is more mas- masculine. It's not like that with women at all. Like, with... This is why I, it was weird for me to meet women here who are very, like... They're manly or they're, like... They're being somebody else's bitch. You know what I mean? Like, male-dominated. Like, oh, I like to call my boyfriend daddy. And, like, he has a control of all my finances. And that's when I'm comfortable. If it's, it's fine, honestly, I make fun of those women all the time, but, like, if that's what they like, then that's what they like, and I'm not trying to, like, force them to live a different life, but I personally don't agree with that kind of stuff. I'm like, I think that minor basic life skill stuff, like, you should be able to take care of on your own, like, come on. But that's what the feminism stuff was fighting for, saying, like, women should all be able to do that. It sounds manly, but it's not an excuse for, you know, not do something because your dad or your brother or your uncle or your husband or your boyfriend can take care of it for you that kind of stuff um i don't like i said i don't um is there this entire playlist here i okay sure why not um Okay, so that's the whole- I actually don't know what it's like in Amer- America. Natives are actually matriarchal. If people <laughs> don't know, um, the British matriarchal, French they're patriarchal. Okay, those are- they're very different that way. Like, French are very sexist and some of them are outright racist. But, um, okay, nobody really- <sighs> It's their language, I gotta be honest. I don't think they're actually like that. That's the trick with French people. They're not actually like that, but their language is. So the way they speak is kind of like that. It's, it gets really offensive at some points. Um, other than that... What happens is that... Um, when women are oppressed as in like before from what i'm reading they weren't even allowed to hold down a significant amount of money at a period of time unless it was okayed by another man that she knew so if i were to make a certain amount of income and i was qualified for that income unless there was a man that i was personally knowing so my father my brother my uncles um my nephew even um my brother my husband my boyfriend whoever unless they said it was okay for me to make that much money and they were actively supporting me in doing so i would not be able to make that income even though i was qualified for it right i wasn't allowed to hold any property unless it was a split property split ownership with another man as in i would have to marry another man in order for me to be able to own a property so that's what the women or suffragettes were fighting for saying that you know 
we as women should be able to hold property on equal basis as men without having them interfere right I, w I don't need to marry somebody in order for somebody to say it's okay for me to own property like i'm some sort of child or i'm incapable of making my own decisions when that's simply not true right and that's true for a lot of women but some women aren't like that which is a problem right that's where the whole sexist thing came from because there are women who get really really bad as in like they do things for the wrong reasons people don't really know what to do about that and uh they kind of take advantage of their position quite frequently i mean they're called bitches so there's a lot of bitches out there right and not all women are bitches which is what they were fighting for which is what the bitches were fighting against saying every woman is a bitch and they're like this unless we do it this way and then that's very manly that's patriarchal whereas actual women who was fighting for women's rights were matriarchal saying hey we can not always like this but like my question was why don't you just move to a matriarchal country like, you don't have to marry somebody from there. Like, you can if you want. It's not really gonna change your future or your holdings. But you can move to a different country where it's matriarchal or female dominated. That's always within your rights to do so. And I don't understand why people weren't doing so. But that's just me personally. I actually don't really know. what the sexism stuff was until I like I'm, I think I'm currently experiencing it where people don't want me to be independent woman on my own and that uh, I that's probably where all of the racist stuff was coming from with the African Americans because they weren't patriarchal they're actually Africa is a matriarchal country likewise with Korea and England so those three countries are matriarchal. I don't know if they're still ma predominantly matriarchal anymore because a lot of political movements and regulations and it, times have changed. But I think just instinctively they're matriarchal. So that kind of stuff is hard to get rid of. I mean, that's kind of what propels a species forward, right? So... The thing that I did notice, which I don't know if it's true for all countries, but matriarchal countries typically tend to be a lot more violent than patriarchal countries. So like, patriarchy, let's all get along. Matriarchy, if you can't cut it, then you can't cut it. I'm sorry. That's the difference. Like, you have to take into account, it's not always possible to get along, but that's a matriarchal thought that patriarchy is actively fighting against and trying to prove it against, saying, it's possible for everyone to get along. They're saying no. It's very idealistic, and there are problems and stuff that pops up, then you realize that this is no longer necessary as it once were. Like... And I don't disagree. Like, I just don't think people are static. Things aren't gonna stay the same forever. But, um... I don't know about India, actually. I think India's supposed to be a truck. I have no idea. I don't even know if they do it by gender. I think they do it by case systems, which is, um... They don't care about the gender, just the class that they're from, a person's from. So, it doesn't really matter if you're a man or a woman, the class discrimination is stronger in Rindia than that kind of stuff. Like, I don't think they consider it at all. But, yeah, um, again, keep in mind, wealth isn't distributed by material belongings, that's a identifier of wealth, okay? But that's not the be-all end-all to wealth. Okay, why is this lagging and doing that stuff? Okay. And so, the problem I think is, Europeans are predominantly patriarchal. There are a few matriarchal countries in Europe, but because it became the European Union, I think they're all trying to go by the patriarchal denominator.
But yeah, um, if you were ever wondering what it is, um, it's like, oh, like, if your mom is not okay with how they, like, it's like, oh, does your mom get to see how the kids are doing, or does the dad get to decide how well the kids are doing? Like, if your dad's like, oh, you're not doing well enough, is that how your family decides you're not doing well enough? Or if it's your mom who's saying you're not doing well enough, is that how everyone agrees with? Like, if your dad says you're not doing well enough, and then your mom just disagrees, do you just dismiss it as her complaining? Or nagging? Or is it, um, you actually consider legitimately what she's saying is accurate, or even, like, you take it into account? Or if your mom is saying, like, oh, this isn't okay, and your dad just doesn't even say anything about it, right? And you're supposed to just listen to go along with what your mom's trying to get you to do, right? It's kind of like your dad doesn't really have an input or like his input is limited to um if your mom's okay with it i'm okay with it that kind of stuff so what what is it kind of like that's how you can kind of see if you're matriarchal or patriarchal i mean i think a lot of people don't want to take that into account when they marry somebody but you should because that's going to be a consistent issue when you're rearing your kids right because then it's like okay um Kid, raising kids is a really big responsibility. It's a big deal for a lot of people, and we kind of both need to agree. <laughs> How are we gonna raise our kids if we ever have kids? Like, what's gonna be a problem between the two of us, and is it gonna affect our relationship? Right? If you're not on the same page when you're raising kids, obviously, it might even end up in divorce because it's such a huge like factor for a lot of people, right? But. But, um, yeah, America, natives, they're actually matriarchal. Korea, matriarchal. England, matriarchal. Again, I think the only reason England had that, like, what had so much authority was because they had such little population density. And a lot of the Europeans who were immigrating to Europe, I mean, immigrating to UK, were trying to... In UK, including, like, um, the Scottish and the Irish, they're actually very matriarchal, even if it doesn't look like it. But, um, well, instinctively they are, but like the Africa is also a matriarchal. And so, I mean, if anyone's noticed, they're more influential and they have more, like, economic holdings than other countries. So America has a lot of Amer economic holdings and a lot of trends, a lot of influence. But patriarchal countries are the one that affects it the most, kind of. So I guess they're trying to make it so like it's everywhere is just one thing, which is very patriarchal. Okay, what well, like women like to have different things. Men just don't mind it. Have men? It won't drive a man crazy if he has to wear the same outfit for the rest of his life, but it will drive a woman crazy. Okay, and that's what I've noticed. Women don't like wearing the same things every day for the day in day out. Like it just it makes people feel weird. Well, it makes me feel weird. That's why, I mean, I'm sure it makes men feel weird, but not to the same extent. I mean, if they had a choice, it was acceptable for them to never ever wear a different style of clothing, they never will. But there are men who like wearing different clothes, okay? That's not them being faggoty or like girly or whatever. Well, back in the day, that's what they used to call them. I mean, it's outdated now, it's not really applicable, it doesn't really make sense to say that anymore, but. Um, cause it's like such a trend now because ma men still like to dress up. People, men from major countries like to do that too. But, um, yeah, that's, that's the difference. Um, I don't really know what sexism is. I never was from a country or a culture where that kind of stuff was a problem. I think in Europe it was a huge problem where women couldn't even, like, go and get a part-time job without a consent. Active consent from her partner or somebody else she knew who told the employer that it was okay for her to work there whereas if i was a there was a man doing that he wouldn't need the consent so that kind of stuff like, like i said men typically are like more towards i want to support this person i want to get along whereas women if i don't want to support you i'm not gonna but it was uh, they're assuming that she won't some women are like that they don't even want to work for that person they won't even do their job they're not wrong about that but not all women are like that 
But yeah, and that kind of led to like a woman couldn't even find their own partners. Right? Like, they weren't even able to choose their own partners. They had to, like, go ahead and make sure that um, it was already chosen by somebody that she, her family knew, or, like, her um, dad knew, or something like that. Like, they were okaying that kind of interaction. Otherwise, she wouldn't even be able to marry that guy. So, that was, like, the huge problem with the sexism stuff. I was like, what? I didn't even know it was still an issue. To this day but apparently it is why isn't the internet working again but ugh, the fuck is the problem with it now but yeah um but yeah i just i to me i was like that is weird i mean what I'm like, what do you mean you can't get a job? Just go get a job. I'm like, well, literally, I can't because, like, my dad said it wasn't okay. I'm like, that was fucking weird. Man, that was fucking weird. I mean, in Korea, it was like, at work, it's very picture for, like, most men or any choice at work. That's how I was doing the government system back in the day, too. Back when it was a monarchy or like it divided into kingdoms, the actual documentation and the authority of the people who had the final say in that was men, but the ones who were making sure that the decisions were going well and pushing forth for that kind of movement was women. So, if the queen wasn't okay with it, it was never gonna go through. But if she's okay with it, then they need other people like the man's signage to sign it off and whatever. That's the major of the country back in the day. Yeah. So, like, I said, okay, she's not okay with it, it's never gonna go through. Mm mm. It's not like that in patriarchal countries. It doesn't matter if she's okay with it or not. If the man's okay with it, everyone just has to put up with it. And other men will be fine because they like to support each other and they wouldn't really disagree too far from what the other was thinking. Which is why, like, men don't really like working with other women or whatever. Mm -hmm. I had a feeling Buddha might have been a woman. Why is it with a man? Mm -hmm. I don't know what that kind of stuff is. That was, to me, it's just gibberish. I'm like, what is that? <laughs> no, I don't, I don't know what the fuck that is. Some people thought I was like, they said um, if a woman was like me and they were from a patriarchal country, she grew up, she'd be really spoiled and she wouldn't really know how to do anything by her own and she would always need somebody else to like support her. Or like, she'd find other people to like go along with her or something, like she wouldn't really be able to be on her own or be independent. It would spoil her like that. And she would want to be involved in things that other people are involved in, whereas I don't really care. I'm trying to do my own thing, and I'm, it's fine for me to do that. But that part is more matriarchal based on gender differences than it is anything else. Um, like I said, to me, completely foreign. I was like, you can't go anywhere without your dad saying that's okay? That's weird. You're weird. <laughs> I, I didn't even know what that was. I was like, what the fuck? Get the fuck out of my face. What do you mean you can't go out today? And I was like, I don't know, my boyfriend's having a bad I mean, shut the fuck up. You know, it's women's rights. Go out. That kind of stuff. But I'm like, um, just. I, I know it was a huge problem, honestly. It came to a point where, like, like it was affecting people's works. And they weren't like getting paid, and people were getting raped left, right, left, right, and center. Because she was out about doing her own thing, and that meant something different in patriarchal countries than it did in matriarchal countries. Which I was like, are you being racist because you assume everybody from this country is exactly like that, or something? Like, the fuck is your problem? But. Yeah. 
Me personally, I'm like, oh, I don't know. Can somebody tell me? What is that? I don't know what it is. Nobody would explain it to me either. But apparently they didn't even realize that's what they were doing. That's how ingrained into their culture and their socialization it was. So their household was like that. Their friends were all like that. People around them were supporting that kind of stuff. And I'm like... I guess some people noticed that it wasn't like that. And they were like, why isn't she like that thing that I thought that was? And they're like, oh, she's from a different country. It's probably different there. And there's differences between countries and stuff. I'm like, yeah, that's, I just don't understand what... <sighs> I'm like... Oh, so weird. I thought they were being stupid. I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? I don't know what that is. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, I'm blanking out here. I'm like, what are you saying right now? That makes no sense to me. I actually don't know if Philippines is matriarchal or patriarchal. Um, Yeah, uh, Middle East? No, I'm sure. I think some parts, some countries are, some countries aren't. I don't know if the Quran is matriarch or patriarchal. Sounds patriarchal a little bit. They ran matriarchal or patriarchal. Again, I'm not really sure. I'm sure it can be patriarchal and still have women's rights. Uh, it's, maybe it doesn't affect them the same way, but um, for me, uh, I just I didn't know that I couldn't go out and find my own husband. Or like, if all the guys agree that I should date that guy, then everybody has to. Do, you, ha I have to date that guy, and I'm like, I don't have to. What the hell kind of bullshit? I'm like, yeah, we all said it was okay for you guys to date. And I'm like, I don't want to. And they're like, what do you mean you don't want to? If he wants to, why don't you give him a chance? And I'm like, why don't you date him if he's so great? Like, why is he single and still looking for somebody if he's so great? If he's saying I'm such an awful person that wants not even want to date me, that makes no sense. I don't care what you guys say. I don't want to date that guy. And they're like, what are you talking about? And I'm like... I, what are you talking about? <laughs> I honestly didn't know. I'm like, what the fuck are they saying to me? It's because they're patriarchal and they some bullshit about how men should decide who my husband is. And I'm like, can do I not get a say in this? <laughs> I feel like if I'm letting a man inside of me, I should be allowed to know who it is and what I'm getting into. <laughs> like, why is that such a hard concept for some people to understand? <laughs> Yeah, people are like, oh, you're a political activist or whatever. I'm like, I'm not. I just, I don't, I'm not doing anything illegal. And I just realized because British are the major of the country. Also, uh, the legal system, it's not oriented towards men. It's actually oriented towards just the complete separation of gender. Regardless of gender, this is what that is. <laughs> I'm kind of more oriented towards matriarchal things, but I guess a lot of people are trying to, like, go against it. And I'm like, to me, the legal system makes complete sense. They're not really trying to hurt anyone with it. They're like, this is, we set this up so that everyone is, has an equal and fair chance at doing whatever it is that they want to do. Okay? I'm not disregarding social issues or criminal histories here. I was just saying, if this person, for whatever reason, wants to do these things, and if within these rights, and there's nothing wrong with that person, they haven't done anything yet, there's no reason for us to say no. That kind of stuff. Um, but, yeah. I actually don't know what it is now, but... From what I can read by their legislative system and their um, just judicial system, that's what that is. So, they're not really trying to hide anything, but I guess they were being slightly sexist when it was written by men who were slightly sexist, who did want more authority. Again, according to psychological psycho psychology studies and statistics, men typically are the ones who are the one like who possess this trait where their need for power is greater than that of women. 
Right, so men want more authority positions, whereas women want better relationships. That's it. <laughs> um, it differs, obviously, but there's general trends that people notice between men and women and gender expressions, and that's a whole field of study which a lot of people don't take seriously. I don't disregard it. It's just something that I don't have... I didn't really understand the nuances of it and how it affected me until I got a little older. Right? Like, people don't really learn to appreciate that kind of stuff until they get a little older. When you're a kid, it doesn't really matter. Especially at such a young age, there is no actual sexual dimorphism. So your pituitary gl glands aren't even actually working and your hormones that are supposed to be in there when you're older is not even being made yet. Right? It's like, okay, hormones are supposed to kick in and I'm supposed to blah 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 blah. But that stuff isn't even there when I'm 8 years old, 9 years old, 10 years old. It starts. They start producing those hormones probably around 10 to 13 when you start hitting puberty. Right? When you start, like when boys start getting their boys get really deep and girls start getting big boobs and they start bleeding out of their crotch every fucking month and guys just, their dick just goes like this all the fucking time. Yeah, it just used to be just soft and flaccid and now it's like this all the time and they're just like, fuck me. <laughs> Literally, that's all they say. Um, but yeah, that's, that's when the whole boom, oh my god, what's going on with my body? <laughs> Why is this happening? <laughs> I'm going to go and start kicking in and I don't know, I'm like, I don't know what they're talking about. I was like, I don't understand a single word that came out of your mouth, fool. But that's what they were telling me. They're like, you know what it is? It's because you're a woman and those are men. I'm like, yeah, I have eyes, you idiot. I think Philippines is my trickle. I actually don't know, but. I'm starting to suspect it might be patriarchal. No, they're patriarchal. Oh my god. Yeah, they're patriarchal, but they don't actually like stop women from doing whatever they do. Okay. Uh, they're patriarchal. Like Japan, to patriarchal. Um, would I be able to marry some guy who's from a patriarchal country? I don't see why not. Our country definitely problems when we have kids and we have to raise our kids and there's so many disagreements on what's socially and not socially acceptable, aside from the cultural differences. I mean, I can already see that happening where, like, if I was marrying some guy who's patriarchal and he thinks that it's okay for him to behave that way for this reason and ha this happens and and I'm like that's not okay even if there's nothing really happening or there's nobody really hurt at the end of it I still don't think it's okay that kind of stuff like disciplining your kids and everything like, it gets to be like a, a whole issue right with the domestic violence and women not really having a right and saying well how our kids are turning out that also is a huge part of it um, yeah so I mean, with poor people, it's more of a problem than with the wealthier populations. But again, wealthier are a very small percentage comparative to the working class and the poor ones. Like, the poor, I think, are very, very chronically poverty-ridden people or very small percentage. Um, the working class majority of them, but they function like poor people. Um, preference is that of a poor person. Uh, with wealthy, very, very small percentage, too. So... I mean, it kind of evens out that way naturally, just with with the materials and the trades and how things progress. But no, I'm like, I was personally really surprised. I was like, oh man, it feels hot, man. You know, I'm really in the staff. I'm like, is there words coming out of your mouth? What? In my ears, it sounds like garbage. And to my nose hole, and to my eyes. Uh, no, you don't really understand 
America is the British and the Koreans because I'm a woman and I'm from a mutual country, whereas I can see where it can be a struggle for Filipinos, for Japanese people, and for people from European countries where men are the ones in charge, not women. Keep in mind, um, the need to keep the species alive is intrinsically wired in every living being. So, with men, like when they need to procreate and they see somebody who's very fertile and would give a greater chance for their offspring to survive, and we're talking like intellectually, academically, socially, and physically, they have a biological urge to impregnate that person, right? And it's something that they were supposed to be taught not to do that way because it does cause problems and especially like it causes problems within the relationship and it causes problems when they're operating the kid. It can cause problems, it can leach out or leak out into their professional life which can affect their income level which affects their kids, right? So that's how it's kind of cycling back into the thing. That's why it's important to, like, because we're not animals, like, yeah, dogs do that, um, who else would do that, um, a lot of mammals do that, whales do that, foxes do that, wolves do that, penguins do that, um, with penguins and other bird species, they like to pair up, so they choose one mate and they just stick with that mate for the rest of eternity or whatever. I don't know if that's true for all species, but with a lot of bird species, it is. And then, they just have a bunch of babies. A lot of the chicks end up dying. Snakes like to eat bird eggs. So, a lot of the eggs that the birds do lay end up being eaten or thrown to the ground by other crazy birds. Or, um, get stolen. Or, like, by a passing squirrel who's looking for his nuts. Or, maybe, um, the bird put the nest in the wrong location or the squirrel's trying to take over us just ruins the entire nest and pushes off the ground and the nest and the eggs are destroyed and people are eating it now. <laughs> um, such is the life of the animal kingdom. <laughs> no, 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 my hard work is destroyed by the stupid squirrel. <laughs> no. Yeah. But... I mean, it's more sophisticated with humans, but not that much. <laughs> no, I don't know what that is. Um, I didn't even know that was such a huge issue because I thought people already sorted through that years ago. You know, back in the 1920s, 1930s, with the suffragettes and the Women who are still being scandalous by showing off their ankles. It's like, oh, you see my ankle. I don't I never really understood that. I'm like, what does that mean? Like, they're actual women. Oh, they've never had kids before. They're not pregnant. They're healthy. And they're women. They're not men dressed as women. They're not some weird freak. And they're like, and they're like, oh, yeah, you, you can see how fertile I am and how not pregnant I am. They're my ankles. <laughs> and I'm like, Jesus. <laughs> Oh, okay, fine, I guess. Apparently there's more than one way to check if she's ever been pregnant. People can get surgery to make it look like they've never been pregnant before. Oh, vaginal plastic costs a lot of money. And a lot of people, like a lot of porn stars don't know how to do it. Um, look like they're virgins, right? Yeah. Um, I don't know, typically all the men, no not typically, so far every man who has ever raped me was from a patriarchal country, Sam for this one guy who's Caucasian and I'm not really sure if he was from a patriarchal or matriarchal country, I don't know if Iran's matriarchal or patriarchal, I think it might be matriarchal honestly, but who knows, I never actually studied Iran's culture as a thing, but yeah, that's what that is! I don't know what else to say. But right. And keep in mind, mind you, not everybody in the world will agree with what you're saying. Yeah? 
Okay, I have to leave some of my stuff here to get some drinks. I'm hoping it's okay. I actually can't bring everything back and forth. I don't know if I should want to get a cola instead. I just don't think out now. Maybe I'll just pack up and just move to a different location. I have got some food and drink. Why? I'm sure everybody has their own opinions about this kind of stuff, but me personally, like, whatever works for you, works for you. This is modern life now, this isn't back in the feudal times or whatever. Um, and if, if, even if you're the first person to do it, now you can be a part of a movement, like, you're a socially progressive person. And you're trying to pave the way for other women and other men who don't have to be forced into a role. Right? They're like, hey, I'm a man, I can do woman stuff. I'm a woman, I can do man stuff. And I still consider myself to be a woman. I still consider myself to be a man. I, I'm like, um, I think that's a lot healthier, but again, it might take a lot longer for people to accept that just as a whole than people to accept that kind of stuff. I mean, I think they're trying to make it more acceptable. That's kind of the idea behind what the doctors are doing. But just keep in mind they, the doctors, the whole field of medicine has been an illegal practice for since the beginning of the field. Like, it wasn't a well respected field at all. Excuse me, the only reason anybody ever put up with it is because, face it, people get sick. Okay, and there's only so much um, holistic medicine can do for somebody. Most of it isn't very invasive. I mean, you kind of need to get in there and do something before that person is like, oh. when it can be prevented by you being very invasive. <laughs> it's not, a lot of people fought very hard and kept a lot of things secret for a very long time so that people can understand the workings of the human body even further to promote the health and the healing of the human body in a less socially acceptable way. As in, not everybody was born in a very healthy, very loving, very wealthy background, even though they should be. Alright, what's the cure for that? I mean, we can still keep that person alive and make sure that they're functioning or can function as well as anybody else, but it just doesn't really happen just naturally, that kind of stuff, because that kind of stuff is a very unnatural problem. So that's kind of how they're counteracting it. But like I said, medicine isn't a very wholesome field. I think it's not very wholesome business, but people are making money from medical trades. If you do it that way, you're gonna lose your license very soon. <laughs> Trust me, it never works. I mean, there's so many doctors who have tried to do it that way. It didn't work. It doesn't work. You have to do it in an approach that's the paradigm, your point of view, your perspective, the reason why you're even going there is so that you can help the patient be more healthy and proactive in their own life, okay, without any sort of interference or prevention from themselves or try to reduce or even get rid of the disability that they're currently inflicted with. That's it. Um, does transgender surgeries help with that acceptance? To a large extent, no, actually. It's kind of... This is why a lot of them, like, it's discriminatory, but a lot of them do work as sex workers. 
But, um, no, to a large extent, it doesn't, like, even with the LGBTQ stuff, like, just because you're transgender doesn't mean other people in that community is gonna accept you. In fact, I've noticed that a lot of men who are gay or, like, homosexual, they don't actually like people who are transgender. They think they're weird and they don't really want to accept them into their community, which causes a lot of problems. And it's hard for other transgender people to meet other transgender people just because there are so many of them so far out spread into different areas and a lot of them don't want to out themselves as transgender. So they'd rather even keep it a secret for as long as they can so that kind of prevents them from even meeting people who are also transgender and kind of forming their own community. Right, like, um, kind of like having their own support group and stuff. And I don't know if they've been, tar- I don't think they have been targeted, but it could, it, it's possible that they are actively targeted against, targeted by people who are, you know, like you're coming into stuff with people who are just like you and who support the stuff you do. And there's a group of you in one location, and there's some crazy person out there who found out your location and now are actively against you and trying to disband you from doing stuff, right? I mean, yeah, that's kind of called a political movement, and they're not really a political group, that's why I don't think they're gonna get targeted. I mean, I think if they were socially progressive in a way that's like, oh, let's promote gender equality on the basis of just because someone's physically a woman but acts and talks and thinks like a man, that person's still a woman. You know, let's let's get that into promotion, let's get that going. That kind of person might be targeted for political assassination, I'm not gonna lie. (laughs) People don't like change, okay? I'm sorry, they just don't. They don't like change, they don't like new things, and they don't want to do things differently. They'd rather have everything be exactly the way it's supposed to be, as it should and has been for the last, who, millennia, who knows? How long has it been since this has been happening? None, years whatsoever, and it's not gonna be a thing today or tomorrow, I guarantee it. (laughs) Yeah, no, people don't like change, okay? You trying to start a political movement, it's gonna be a very long time before it gets accepted. And even not longer before people start being okay with it. Right? Like... Anyway, um, another thing I want to say is that people don't like it when you think that they're somebody that they're not. Even if you're trying to make them look good. Like, if you know somebody's a bad person and they say they're bad people, but then you keep saying you're a good person, you're trying to force them to be a good person, they're gonna hate you for it. Okay, it doesn't matter who they are. If you if you do the opposite, right? You're a bad person and I think you should behave as a bad person would, even though they're good people, they're gonna hate you for it. So just don't don't enforce your idea of what that person should be. Just let them be who they are. And if they tell you outright, I'm a sack of shit, then take their word for it. Okay? Just don't try to tell them otherwise. Okay, that's inappropriate. But my point is, <laughs> matriarchal countries, they exist and they are endangered by the patriarchal people who are like, why are you saying it's okay for women to do things without man's permission? And they're like, because this is okay with us. <laughs> And they're like, no, and they're like, no, and they're like, we need men to be in power. Don't you want power? Don't you want success? Don't you want a million of women to be with you? And they're like, not really. And they're like, how dare you? (laughs) How dare you not want the exact same thing as I do? I'm a man. You're a man. Are you not a man? (laughs) It's basically how I imagine men's um, conversations to go with other men. I don't really know that much. I hung out with a lot of guys when I was growing up because a lot of women were very wishy-washy or complete bitches. And they are patriarchal countries. They're from patriarchal areas or like they're patriarchal. And I'm like, I don't want to hear more of you telling me that I am a man in order for me to have a job and a fucking social life. Fuck off. Anyway, that's probably where the whole like, um, you know that joke like oh I'm an independent black woman and you'd hate me because I'm independent and I'm black or whatever I don't need a man that kind of stuff and I'm like yeah because they're matriarchal probably that's like, what I'm assuming and I, from what I've seen yeah they are a majority of them are matriarchal majority of them are matriarchal 
Not majority, all of them. All of them are sure I'm sorry. Is, that's just how things are there, okay? If you don't like it, don't go there. If you don't want to be like that, then don't. But you have to learn how to accept that there are people that are like that, okay? I'm sorry, you can't force people to be th something that they're not. You're never going to be able to. That's just who they are. And you need to be able to be okay with the types of people existing. That's just, that's just life, man. You gotta learn how to live and enjoy your life and stop trying things, make things into your own. You know, in your head, I know you have an idea of how life and how people should be. And I'm not saying those are bad things, but I'm saying you need to be able to, like, I freaking hate this shirt. <laughs> you need to be able to be okay with the fact that whatever your idea you have about other people and what the world should be at large is not gonna be reflective of reality all the fucking time. I'm sorry, it's just not. I mean, there's a lot of people working towards that goal where they want equality and they want justice and they don't want people to be hurt and affected by all these problems and social issues. But again, it's been an ongoing issue and there's other people in the globe who don't agree with that kind of stuff. So they have their own reasons as to why. And it does affect each other, so that's how they're trying to come to terms with it. Let's not just... I'll right, go there and say you blah 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 and then just like boom blow up in your face anyway that's what i've learned so far i'm not trying to be a political activist i'm just trying to live my life and everyone's like no nah, you can't you gotta get married you gotta have a boyfriend otherwise we're never gonna leave you alone and i'm like you know that's illegal do you know that oh, you fuck my hands smell um you know that it's not okay for you to tell me that I can't live my life because you personally don't find it okay that I am an independent woman who have no reason to be with a man in order for me to function. I get that there are women that are like that out there, and I get that you're trying to make it okay, and you don't want them to getting be getting any ideas, right? You don't want them to be because they're simple. They're like, oh, she can do it. Why can't I do it? You don't want that to be happening to you. Right? No, I get that, but at the same time, it's like, okay, you can't just not let me live my life, dude. That's not even okay. And thus ends my tirade. I am seriously debating if I should just leave my stuff here, grab something from the convenience store real quick and come back, or not. I'm gonna take his advice and see how things go. Unfortunately, I don't know if... I can't do anything else. Um, I asked some other guy, he's like, um, I'm like, do you think it's okay to leave my tent here and stuff? And he's like, it, it will be fine. Just take your valuables and things that you need with you. Such as like seriously expensive stuff. But other than that, like just leave everything else here and nobody should be really taking it. It should be fine. I don't think anybody would. To be honest. But you should be careful with that kind of stuff anyway. I'm like, I could just pack it up and like, you know, take it with me. And just leave it outside. I don't know if that's a good idea. 